Hello, my quilting friends. My name is Leah Day, and welcome back to the Eternal Love Quilt Along. Today, we're quilting many beautiful free motion quilting designs into this gorgeous wall hanging. We're gonna stitch her hair section and her skin tone fabrics, and I have lots of tips and tricks to help you along the way. So let's get started free motion quilting this goddess quilt together. So let's start first by quilting the skin tone fabric on Eternal Love. So what I'm gonna do is fill this in with just some gentle echoing lines. So I've gone into her arms here and just quilted lines about an eighth of an inch apart through that area. And if you can't really see it or you don't know how to space it, pull it on a marking pencil and mark it. Please don't feel like uh, that's against the rules. It's absolutely allowed. Over here in this little section, I just went back and forth, little lines. Now with the face, I decided to change this up because like, no matter how many times, especially around all of these little detailed areas in her face, no matter how many times I quilted that, it just didn't end up coming out right. Something kind of went funky around her mouth, something went funky around her eyes. Uh, it didn't look good. So I decided to switch to micro stippling. This is a super, super dense stippling. It's gonna blend in really well. It's gonna flatten out that area. Uh, and you're not gonna see it very well because I'm using you know, thread that matches this color. I'm using Isochord Vanilla, but basically it is a very dense micro stippling we're gonna do over her face just to blend that in. So I've got one little section here to fill in with echoes. I think I'm gonna echo that nice curve to her neck and that's what we're gonna get started with. I'm gonna slide the quilt under the machine and drop my foot down. I'm just using a regular darning foot here and I've broken the base open and also stopped it from hopping up and down. You can find another tutorial on how to do that for your darning foot on my website. Okay, so there we go. All right, now I'm gonna curl up the quilt so it's nice and out of my way. I've got a good grip on it. And I'm just basically gonna stitch that curve right along her neck. Basically where um, the little points to that blanket stitch are coming in. Now I'm gonna travel stitch right along that purple fabric and swing around for an echo. Echo quilting is just stitching parallel lines, evenly spaced parallel lines. And now I'm just gonna swing back and forward. And it's okay if your lines go a little further apart, go a little bit closer together. This is meant to be organic. Now I reached that area and I filled in all of that, so now I'm gonna travel stitch down. And I'm also kind of doing a little bit of an outline to this section. I've got a zigzag stitch that's outlining it, but you know, it's kind of still nice just for the look on the front and back of the quilt, especially with a really light thread color like this. It's really nice to go in, just do a little bit of outlining in some places. And there we go, and I've got one more line of quilting from all the way down to that corner, and then come up. So there we go, that's how I filled in that section. Now I want the other section to be like it's running in the same line. So this is a situation where I might pull out a marking pencil and just plan out how those lines are gonna go. First I'm gonna clip nice long thread tails and pull that bobbin thread up to the surface of the quilt. And I do that by just tugging on that top thread. It'll pull up a loop, and if you take a pin, you can pick at it. That loop is your bobbin thread, and you just pull it right up to the surface. And the reason I do that all the time, first off, I'm gonna tie these in a knot and bury them, uh, but if I'm kind of wanting to keep on moving and, and keep quilting and not have to stop, I'm just gonna pull them to the surface so that way that bobbin thread doesn't stay on the back of the quilt and make a mess on the back of the quilt where I can't see it. Okay, so now I'm gonna kind of plan this out and it's just good to just kind of keep in mind, you know, how that, that gentle curve was going. It was just something kind of like that. And does it have to be perfect? Absolutely not. I think I'm going to get started right there with that middle curve. I really like that shape. So you just want to kind of plan out your angle. You know, alternative, if you don't like this idea or that seems a little clunky to you, you could also just echo her shirt and come back and forth uh, echoing that angle too. Just look at what angle or what curve on the quilt that you like and just stitch that repeatedly and it's going to fill in the space. Don't overthink it, you know, it's really not that big of a deal. This thread blends perfectly with that skin tone. This is um, 
uh, the really nice cream colored fabric, really nice cream colored thread, and so they're going to blend in completely so you don't have to panic too much if something's ever so slightly off. Okay, now I'm going to move those thread tails out of my way as I stitch right along that outline all the way down to the opposite side of that line. You can see how I just echoed, you know, filling in all that whole space with nice echoes. Now I'm going to do the same thing this way. Stitch down, stitch over, and back up. Wow, I think that looks really good. Very simple way of finishing that off. And I'm going to do just a bit of outline stitching all the way around. And the reason why I'm outlining is because these lightest fabrics are, you know, really will stand out on the back of the quilt if you use a dark backing fabric. I think it looks better. And if you notice the zigzag stitching that we have here, that actually outlined the blue fabrics and then the purple because those were all on top of this skin tone fabric. So by outlining, you know, we basically kind of have the outline already stitched in the blue and the purple, and this is adding that outline in the cream. So there we go. That's just a little bit of my picky nature. <laughs> you don't have to do it, of course. There we go. Okay, again, clip nice long thread tails so I can tie off and bury those threads in the middle of the quilt. And then we'll move on to her face next. So now I'm going to get started working on her face. And I'm going to pull up thread here right on the bottom of her lip. I think that's a good place to start because I want to stitch around that lip first. So we're going to just echo stitch, uh, travel stitch basically, right around. And remember what I said, if you're stitching, your blanket stitching or your zigzag stitching wasn't exactly perfect, by doing that little bit of an outline, I just kind of covered up any little zigzag that was poking out the edges. So that looks really good now. Okay, so now I'm going into a very dense stipple. And this is, you know, it's just a wiggly, freeform design. I'm forming an irregular pattern over the quilt and I'm trying not to cross my lines of quilting. Here's the thing though, whenever you get this dense with stippling and your matching thread, it doesn't really even matter if you cross your lines of quilting. No one is going to be able to tell. <laughs> So if I do accidentally trace back over another line, I'm not going to panic. I'm not going to rip it out. I'm just trying to wiggle through this area as fluidly as possible. And notice that how I'm filling. So I, I came around her lips and I worked my way down, filled in her chin, and now I'm working my way back up again. Uh, I like to quilt in rows so that way I can see the design clearly. And so I fill it without leaving any gaps in the quilt that I'll have to travel stitch back over and fill in and you know later or even have to break thread and wiggle my way back over there and fill. So I really try and fill as consistently as possible. So that way the design, you know, I don't have, you know, don't leave basically a big patch on her cheek open. You know, that would look kind of weird. <laughs> I just want it to be evenly filled and consistent. That's the goal. And the thing I like about stippling, it's the perfect design for this kind of thing. It adds very little movement, it flattens out. You know, stippling is very flat texture, even though it's very wiggly and freeform. Uh, it really doesn't add uh, a directional texture. You're not going to get horizontal lines or vertical lines going in there because it's all wiggling in all different directions. And that's really useful. It ends up flattening out, and it's a nice contrast. We've got a basically kind of a texture contrast here between her face and her neck, and that looks really nice too. Okay, so now I'm gonna work my way over. You now, the prongs of my darning foot are pretty wide. Even though they're clear, it can be kind of hard to see this design. So, uh, you know, anytime that you can't see, just wiggle it around, change your angle and sometimes just the slightest little rotation of your quilt can make the biggest difference in the world. Okay, we're coming up on the eyes, and this is important because I want to, again, do a little outline quilting. You don't have to, but if you've got a little bit of extra black thread that is overlapping, then you can stitch around it, throw more thread at it, and kind of hide that. 
Now I stitched onto the black just a bit, right there. Don't like that, but the nice thing is with black, you can easily color it in. And if you stitch a lighter thread onto black fabric, you can color it in and hide it with a Micron Pigma pen, just a, a black Pigma pen. So I'm gonna probably go in and just color that out to hide it. And now I'm just carefully wiggling my stippling all around the bottom of that eye shape. I'm just making sure that it's matching up with the stippling before. And with stippling, there are a lot of different little, basically little shapes that I like to quilt that I kind of chain together. I've got another tutorial on this, so definitely check it out. And uh, just leahday.com slash stippling. And I also teach you how to quilt it on a bigger scale too. So if you're curious about this design and you'd like to learn a different way of doing it or maybe quilt it bigger over your quilt, that's definitely something you can do. It's a very versatile design. It's one of the most popular free machine quilting designs. And there's a reason for it. It's so versatile, you can do so much with it. Okay, now I'm slowing down. And I'm gonna do that outline quilting again. And this is just mostly just so that you can see that shape on the front and back of the quilt. I really like that. I like being able to see the shape where it's supposed to be. And then it's also to hide little mistakes. And let's say you had a lot of them. while well, you could travel, stitch around again, throw more thread at it, add a little bit more stitching on top of the black thread if it overlapped a bit. That's just fine. And you know, you could also leave this eye area, this place between her eye brow and her eye lid. You could leave that open or you could fill it with stippling. I think I'm gonna fill mine with stippling. I'm just wiggling into that area. Nice little row of the design and wiggling back out again. And here's what it looked like whenever I finished quilting the skin section on Eternal Love. Now I've moved to the hair section and I've switched to Isocord Blueberry colored thread. And this is actually a combination that I don't do very much. I don't usually do dark thread on light fabric, but I really wanted you to be able to see what I'm doing and see how I'm quilting these feathers. Uh, the better combination is lighter thread on darker fabric that ends up looking better and your mistakes, um, I don't know, for some reason they just hide better on darker fabric. Uh, but I'm using this thread here because I already had a bobbin wound with it, <laughs> honestly. And I really like this look. I'm gonna be really careful to stitch these feathers so they look nice. Uh, so what I'm doing basically is just curling out and around and then coming back. This is a travel back feather and I'm running along the bottom edge of this lock of hair and then swirling out. But notice that I'm not filling the space completely. I'm leaving about a quarter inch from the tip of the feather to the top edge of that lock of hair. And the reason is, is this is an echo feather. I'm gonna go back around and echo across the top. Now, is this the only way you can do it? No, there's like a million different ways that you can change up feather designs and play with them. You could have them totally fill in that space completely. That would look nice. You could go inside the feathers and add extra designs and flowing texture and spirals and swirls and all kinds of stuff. Uh, I just like this design. This is what I stitched on the original quilt, the very first version of it I, that I made. And I really like it. I think it looks really nice. And then the echoes just add that little bit of extra soft texture. It kind of softens up the feathers even more, really makes them stand out nicely. So as I'm coming down to this tip, I'm shrinking the feather size. So as I travel back along the tip, I'm just thinking about a smaller shape. Feathers are teardrops, basically. That's what they're based on. And stitching this design freehand really just comes into making that nice curve. Now, if you can't stitch this freehand, if that's just a real struggle for you, please don't feel bad about it. I spent years marking every single feather on my quilt because I could not stitch it freehand, and that is A-OK, -okay. it's perfectly fine. Now I wanted to get just a little bit of echo quilting here all the way around the background because I'm obsessive compulsive. <laughs> you don't have to do it. I just think that'll look nice. And now I'm gonna start echoing around, and basically what I'm doing here is I'm just bouncing from point to point. The points are where those feathers split, 
Okay, so let me shift things around so you can see nicely. So I'm just swinging around and down. It's a bounce echo. So whenever I'm doing any sort of bounce, I just make sure that if I need to stop and reposition my hands or shift the quilt, I do that when the needle's in the down position right in those little points. I try not to stop right here in the middle of the curve because if you wobble a bit or something, it can be a little noticeable. So just try and make that curve nice and smooth and even and bounce from point to point. And then if you need to shift things, go on ahead and do the shifting while you're in the point. It is a really good idea to practice these designs off the quilt a little bit first. Kind of just warm up a bit. If you know, you're know you just starting free motion quilting and you're kind of cold, you, know, you haven't really been moving and grooving and, and working with it, your body really, this is a kind of a physical thing, your body will warm up and your hands will start moving faster as you do more free motion quilting in a particular session. So I would do a little bit of warm up on a practice sandwich first before getting on your real quilt, because you want to avoid having to rip anything out, especially when it's a fusible applique quilt. Fusible, the fusible web tends to make those lines of stitching, it just, the, the holes in the, um, in the fabric don't seal up as easily because they're kind of covered in glue. So you want to avoid making mistakes. And you know my rule, don't rip it just cover it up with more thread. <laughs> you know, you could couch decorative threads on top of it. You could cover it in paint. You could cover it in magic marker, whatever you need to do. Uh, I would just avoid having to rip something out. So now I'm very carefully stitching one more line of bouncy echoes. And you can see as I'm going through here, at times I'm travel stitching back. So that way I can take care of that echo stitching. But I'm gonna connect right here and travel all the way back. And I'm gonna fill in all these little tiny gaps that are left open in this lock up here. Again, this is me being a little obsessive compulsive. It's also me doing a little bit of outline stitching because I like that, it stands out really nicely. It's adding extra thread and color. And especially when I'm doing a dark uh, contrast like this, dark thread on light fabric, I think that more thread makes it look better because it's more like the outlines on a coloring book and in it, I don't know, I just think that makes it look better, you know? So much of free motion quilting, so much of quilting any quilt is just about your own opinion and saying, okay, I like that, that looks good. You know, now how do I, how do I make that look? And for me, it's doing a little extra travel stitching, doing a little bit more thread play and adding just that little bit more color and design to the quilt. Okay, so now we're back on track and I can speed up a little bit. Let's go a little faster, show you what that looks like. So I'm putting my foot down and because my in increase my speed dramatically, you can see how much faster my hands can move. I'm just swinging down and around. And those little points where we're bouncing, those are gonna build up thread too. Those are gonna stand out as well. And that definitely adds to the design. Okay, so now I wanna do some outline quilting around the background. Maybe even fill up that tip with a few lines. That looks good. And now I'll carefully travel back. Sometimes I'll even go back and forth. And that is almost thread painting, just to add that kind of thicker punch of texture and thread. That looks great. I love that. If I had been thinking about using this thread on this applique, uh, if I had been planning on doing that when I did the blanket stitching, then obviously I would have done that zigzag stitch uh, the same color. I would have done you know, blueberry around the applique, but honestly, I don't think this looks bad. You know, it does have a little bit of a contrasty thing going on, and you got a little bit of that zigzag peeking out. That's a lighter thread color, but Honestly, I think that looks kind of funky, you know? I'm really trying something new here. I've never really tried using two different colors of thread, one for blanket stitching and one for quilting. So it's just one of those funny things. There's so much space and room to experiment when it comes to applique. It's so much fun for that reason. There's just so many ways that you can do it. And this is the third time <laughs> I've quilted an eternal love quilt and it's turning out uh, different from the rest. You know, every single one of them has been a little bit different because they've each given me an opportunity to play and try different things, you know? 
Right now I'm doing just a bit of outlining right along that outer edge. And then now finish off just a few more bouncy echoes. So there we go. What I'm gonna do next, I'm already been thinking about what designs I want to go in the other colors. What I'm planning on doing is uh, some ex nice uh, echoing lines. So uh, in the darkest blue, I'm probably just going to trace along and do some dark blue echoing lines through here. And I'll probably use the same color thread. So that'll actually match. I'll probably change to a lighter color thread and stitch something simple and flowy. So I'll break thread and we'll move over there and check that out next. So now I'm gonna fill in this nice lock of hair that's really the most I think it's the most dominant lock of hair in the quilt because it runs down into the goddess's shirt. And so I'm just going to fill this area with gentle echoes. So I'm coming in and I'm stitching, you know, basically a little distance away from the points of the zigzag stitch that held down that applique, that secured the applique. And then now I'm going to swing around and go up the other side. So there's two ways you can do echoes. You can echo off of one side of a shape and just have it go continually from one side to the other. Or you can kind of do a, uh, an echo on both sides uh, constantly coming in. So there's two different ways of doing it and there's basically no way, right or wrong way. Uh, you just have to play with it and see which way is easiest for you. Sometimes whenever you do it this way, you might end up with kind of a weird channel, especially if the spacing of the lines didn't work out quite right. So I'm going to cross my fingers that that's not going to happen. <laughs> but we'll see. You know, I'd, I'd rather be able to show you something, you know, have it maybe not work out perfectly and show you what I do to work it out. Okay, so here we go. Now I'm going to come in again. And I'm just echoing about an eighth of an inch from that first line of quilting. And I have generally been quilting pretty densely on this quilt. And you may, might be wondering about that. Whoops, that was a pretty big stitch. Back that up and drop it down. There we go. Um, you might be wondering about the level of density. Please keep in mind that this is a wall hanging. This is meant to rest on the wall. This is not meant to go on a bed or be soft and cuddly. A soft and cuddly quilts are quilted very, very differently. And this is designed to be hung on a wall uh, it's designed to have extra texture with the thread. And so, yeah, I stitched this really densely and it's gonna feel very stiff. So understand that there's different styles of quilting. There's not just one single way or one single method for quilting your quilts. There's lots of different uh, styles and scales. So this is a denser scale, meaning the lines between those, uh, the space between the lines of quilting is very tight. It's very small spacing. It takes more time. And I gotta say, you know, the bigger the quilt, the more time this will take to fill completely. Uh, and it's not too bad on a wall hanging of this size when you start getting into, you know, 80 inches <laughs> quilted very densely, then really that, that starts to become kind of a chore. So I would advise, you know, keep this small on small wall hangings. When it starts getting bigger, definitely think about widening the spacing of your lines uh, and adding a lot of motifs, decorative motifs that you can add with Trapunto. And I taught that in a workshop, the Heart and Feather Whole Cloth Quilt. And you can learn how to do Trapunto, how to add motifs to a quilt. It's really, really fun. Okay, so now we're coming back in. And like I said, this is the tricky way when you do your echoes kind of coming in from both sides, then you're gonna end up with the single channel. And that's what I'm coming in for right now. And I wanna try and do this so it doesn't look weird. So I'm coming in where I'm kind of estimating, just looking at the quilt and estimating how that should run. And if ever that's a struggle for you or you just can't see it, grab a marking pencil and mark it. That is always allowed, remember that. Okay, so now this last line is really simple because all I basically have to do is just estimate and try and stitch right in the middle of that channel all the way through. So I'm just gonna go slow, stitch carefully, and notice that my lines wobbled a bit here and there. But overall, when you look at the texture, even a bit of a wobble here and there, it ends up looking good. 
You know, it's not a problem if your stitching isn't perfect. It all ends up coming out. When all the lines of quilting are there, it all ends up looking really good. Now, one last thing. Uh, you might have noticed that your needle is getting just a little bit gummy. And if that is a struggle for you, grab a little alcohol wipe like this and uh, open it up. Now you wanna move your quilt away and you wanna cover your machine with something so you're sure that the alcohol is not gonna drop down into your machine, but just wipe your needle down. That will dissolve the fusible web glue that's gumming up your needle. If you've noticed that, if that's starting to become a problem or if your thread is suddenly starting to shred or break on you, then that is a solution. Uh, and yes, no matter what fusible web you use, it does sometimes get gummy and that will fix it really nice and easily. Okay, so now I'm gonna change thread colors and we'll fill in this last hair section with a different design. So I've decided to quilt swirling water into these medium blue colors of hair. And I've decided to also show you one other way that you can secure down your fusible appliques. So let's say you didn't want to do any blanket stitching and you didn't want to do any zigzag stitching and you wanted to leave your applique's raw edge. Well, this is what you would do to kind of not really seal up the edges so much as just make sure that your applique is secure. And that is stitch along the edge about an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the fabric. You can see I'm just trying to maintain a consistent spacing throughout. And then whenever I run up, like right here, I'm running up another applique, I'm still gonna maintain that spacing. I'm gonna stay about yeah, a little bit less than an eighth of an inch away. And if it wobbles a bit, it's no big deal. So if you're wanting to let your applique fray a bit, then this is the way that you could quilt your quilt. You could still have really nice filler designs within this space, but you basically wouldn't get close to the edges. Now the one downside with this is if you do the same thing here on the opposite side and you know that edge frays, you might end up exposing some of those overlaps that we have with the applique. Best thing to do is experiment with it. You know, more than anything else, you've got to test and see what you like on your quilt and then figure out, you know, what you like to see and then make the quilts that way. So there we go, I've done a really nice inner outline. So I would call that an inner outline. And that's what I'm gonna fill with swirling water. This is one of my favorite designs. Starts with a simple spiral shape. You can go into the center. Now I'm going to echo around that. And if I have to, then I'm gonna travel stitch along that inner outline I've just stitched. There we go, that looks good. Now the whole second step of the design is just simply to travel stitch and then echo, hit that swirly tip, and then swing around. So I'm just gonna bounce back and forth to fill in that area. That looks good. Now I'm gonna swing around and fill in the opposite side. Kind of bounce around it. That looks good. Okay, so now I have a little bit more space to work in and I can swirl in the opposite direction. So I'll come out and around. I'm gonna put my foot down because I feel like my stitches are getting just a little bit big. There we go. So swirl out and around. Now I'm gonna slow down just a bit because sometimes I have to travel stitch along that inner outline. So I wanna do that carefully. Now I'm gonna swing all the way around and just run up against the edge of that curve, just like that. And back again and forward. Sometimes, you know, filler designs, whenever you're filling in kind of the weird spaces, it's just a back and forth curve more than anything else. And here I'll go around and maybe around one more time. There we go, that looks great. So I'm just gonna continue filling in that space with swirling water, just forming that swirl shape, just like that, maintaining you know, same distance between my lines of quilting and then using the edges of that inner outline to travel stitch along in order to reach the next area of the design. So here's what it looks like whenever I finished quilting the hair with echoes, swirling water, and echo feathers. So that's it for this video. I hope you learned a lot and you're excited about giving these designs a try. 
definitely stitch them out on something small, like a little practice sandwich. You know, I like about this size, just to kind of get your feet wet, get warmed up more than anything else. This is a physical activity. And just like playing a sport, you wouldn't go out and play basketball without having a little bit of a warm up. Same thing for free motion quilting. You wanna get your hands moving, get your machine moving, uh, and kind of get that rhythm down, and then move to your real quilt and start playing with these designs. So I hope that you're excited about giving them a try. Next week, we're gonna finish up this quilt by stitching her shirt, the baby, and the background. So just one more week left of the Eternal Love Quilt Along. Now, if you're just finding this video and you'd like to join in the fun, all you need is a copy of the quilt pattern. You can find it at leahday.com slash eternal love. Until next time, let's go quilt.